Now, after weeks in the sea Indian camp, the right wing with Captain Miles Keogh was deployed on higher ground. It's here that all the detective work comes together and starts to reveal what happened to the 7th Cavalry at the Battle of the Little Bighorn. Indian witnesses described their first encounter with Custer's soldiers. From across the river, I see the column of soldiers turn to the left to march down to the river where the attack was to be made. Mrs. Spotted Horn Bull, Hunk Papa Lakota. The archaeological evidence here confirms the Indian stories. The left wing that came down the river did meet some light resistance. And there's archaeological evidence of that in this flat out here. There were cartridge cases and there were personal items that were lost and counter fire from the Indians across the river. Uh, it wasn't a heavy action, no evidence of strong intensity. The reason for this was that most of the Indian warriors were still fighting Reno to the south. Unprotected, the Indian women and children fled north. Custer and his left wing of 80 troopers set off in pursuit. Meanwhile, the right wing's 120 men deploy near Calhoun Hill under the command of Captain Miles Keogh. At this stage, the fighting was sporadic and long distance. But surely the 7th Cavalry, even when outnumbered, had been trained to deal with any Indian attack. So how critical were their tactics to the outcome of this battle? You're going to do a little uh, tacticking for us. Right, yeah. some skirmish line. Yeah. Combat can be a very stressful situation. So tactics are a very, very good way to maintain cohesion and stability among the soldiers. Custer's cavalry tactics were laid out in a manual written in 1874. The horse got the soldier to the scene of the action. Then typically the troopers would dismount and fight on foot. The troopers formed a line, each spaced five yards apart. This was called a skirmish line. Three out of the four in a squad would rush up to the skirmish line and prepare to fire. The horse holders would then lead the lead horses back to a safe position behind the lines. The skirmish line could fire either on command or at will. The skirmish line was a response to the increasing accuracy of firearms. It was safer to spread men out to avoid masses of easy targets. Was there any evidence of these deployments on the battlefield? To find a skirmish line, we should expect to find cartridge cases from individual guns distributed at roughly five yard intervals. At Calhoun Hill, there were cartridge cases indicating the right wing skirmish line. And the skirmish line is represented by the flags, and each one of these flags is the approximate location where we found a cartridge case or several cartridge cases, each from a different carbine indicating where a soldier was placed along the line. Here, Indians, using the terrain for cover, threatened right-wing troopers exposed on their skirmish lines. And the warriors are beginning to swarm up out of the valley from all directions, particularly from here in the south. And, it, and they gain this ridge out here, and we found excellent archaeological evidence over there of a large number of warriors who are on the other side of that ridge. The Indian warriors needed no command or control. They fought individually as natural-born hunter-killers. Most of these men being professional predators all of their life against humans and animals, you didn't have to tell them when to get down, when to hide, when to charge, when to totally take advantage of someone when they're in complete panic. The cavalry soldier was trained to fight from a distance. The Plains Indian fought up close and personal. And everything generally had a long handle on it so that on horseback, you were able to swoop down off the side of your horse and hit men that were disabled under the ground. So they would try to knock their weapon hand out and break their wrist with one blow and then just backhand them across the forehead or on the temple like that. Fire at will! The limitations of the troopers' tactics were soon evident. Dismounted, the cavalry had no mobility and the need for horse holders reduced a quarter of their available firepower. The United States military was trained to fight a conventional standing army, the Prussians, um, the French, uh, whatever. 
Uh, they were not trained to fight the Great Plains Indians. So why did the U.S. Army fail to adjust to the Indian tactics? The Army was very rigid by the book, didn't have a lot of room to ad lib. So uh, in an open fight on a dusty, hot ridge, the uh, conventional army was probably at a disadvantage. As the warriors closed in on Custer's right wing, Indian accounts described Captain Keogh's desperate retaliation. About 40 of the soldiers came galloping from the east part of the ridge within Lake Northern Cheyenne. But the Indians counterattack, and the soldiers fell back. Tactics were designed to control men and direct firepower. So what happens when fear and panic sets in? Uh, under extreme duress, panic can overcome and people bunch together. So I thought that would be recognizable in the archaeological record, and there it was. There is one place on the battlefield where cartridges form skirmish lines. And nearby, a cluster of cartridges suggests that troopers began bunching in panic. And that bunching, as archaeology shows, took place right in here. One of the elements that exacerbated the panic and fear that developed here was the disparity between soldiers who were mounted and those who were dismounted. And in the end, the entire right wing disintegrated. It's the evidence of matching cartridge cases that reveals the flight of guns and men away from Calhoun Hill. Captain Keogh's company I fell here. From here, right wing survivors fled north towards the left wing, which would eventually end up on Custer Hill. The archaeology here indicates it was a pretty one-sided affair. Not much uh, evidence of cartridge cases on behalf of the soldiers, but lots of Indian bullets. And Indian accounts speak of a very terrible event, too. Uh, they speak of riding up and striking soldiers down, soldiers firing wildly in every way, some feigning death. Runs the enemy, said it was like a stampede of buffalo. Almost the entire right wing was slaughtered on the desperate running fight to Last Stand Hill. For decades, these markers were interpreted as a skirmish line, but in the context of the Custer myth, the gallant last stand of the last man and the last bullet, probably not so. Probably flight. Christian knows to 